because that's the next Catalan number, 42 for 6, etc. Okay? All right, so now let's start to use the notion of recurrence equations to solve problems. Now, my problem is this. I'm going to take a set of lines in the plane and count the number of regions that they determine. But I'm going to require that the lines be in general position, meaning that every pair of lines intersect and no three lines intersect at the same point. So the configuration shown has four lines. And I've got one of them in red because I want you to think with me about how a recurrence will be, will be made. So we're going to let dn be the number of regions that you get. What is d1? If you just put one line in the plane, then the, re the plane is divided into two regions, the points on one side and the points on the other side. If you put two lines in the plane, then clearly the plane is divided into four regions. Now, if you put three lines, you have to think about it for a moment. It isn't 8. It doesn't go 248. It goes 247. And then after that, it's 11. Now, now, for here, just count with me. Do you see the 11 regions that are formed by those four lines? Now, how many regions would you get if you had 25 lines? Well, conceivably, you could make a big picture and count them. But probably already by the point of 25 lines, your picture would be so messy that you would probably have two lines that don't intersect. And second, when you started to count them, you'd make a mistake. I know I would. And so better is to think about it and discover that, one, we can calculate this pretty easily, and two, the answer is the same regardless of how the lines are positioned as long as they're in general position. All right, now let's see why. If you know the number of regions when you have n lines, can you calculate the number of regions that you will have when you have n plus 1 lines? Can you go from the knowledge at n to the knowledge at n plus 1? And the answer is yes, and, and, and that's what this picture is supposed to suggest to you. The red line is the fourth line. So I'm using the value of n equals 3. Is that clear to you? The red line is the fourth line. 4 is 3 plus 1. So in my picture, I'm illustrating the case n equals 3. Before I put the red line up there, I had d3 regions. I don't even know what d3 is. I do, but I, I, I want to work it as if I don't know. Then. How, does, how do I get D4 from the knowledge of D3? Now I look at the red line, the fourth line. How many lines does the red line cross? It crosses each of the others exactly once, and those points are all distinct because of the general position assumption. So there are one, two, three points of intersection. One, two, three points of intersection means that the red line is divided into four parts. It's the bin trick and the gaps trick. Three points of intersection divide the red line into four parts. You see the four parts? And each of the four parts goes through a region which has been divided into two. Each of the region, each of the segments of the red line 
goes through a, an old region when I was looking only at the black lines, which is now divided into two. So if I, I'm going to attempt to do this. No, I'm not going to. I'll walk off screen and, and the engineer will get really mad at me. If you look at that picture, in the upper right corner, you see a black triangle. That black triangle is not impacted when the red line is added. It was a perfectly good region before, and it remains a perfectly good region. And other regions in the picture are the same. But there are four black, four regions in the black lines, which are now divided into two. And they correspond to the four segments of the new line, the red line. And this leads to the recurrence that the number of regions when you have n plus 1 lines, dn plus 1, is the old value, dn, plus n plus 1. One new one for each segment of the new line. So if I know d1, I can get d2. I, I don't even have to draw the picture. As I point out on the slide, D2 is 2 plus 1 plus 1, which is 4. D3, I don't have to draw the lines. It's 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7. And D4, which is this picture, is 7 plus 3 plus 1, which is 11, etc. D5 and D6, how long would it take you to calculate D5 and D6? 30 seconds? 45 seconds? But not two hours. And you don't draw any pictures. You just substitute in. That's pretty powerful. That's a powerful idea. All right, here's one which is essentially the same problem. Put circles in the plane in general position. All circles must overlap, but they're going to overlap in two points. No, no tangency. And no three circles intersect in the same point. How many regions do they contain? If you put down one circle, you got two regions inside and outside. If you put down two circles, it's a Visa or no MasterCard. How many regions? Four. If you put down three circles, you get eight. And by the way, back when you were in high school, you did Venn diagrams, right? Why didn't anybody ever draw Venn diagrams with four circles? They used one circle, two circles, and three circles, but never four. And the reason is you can't do it. You want to represent all the possibilities of the subsets of a set. But when you have four circles, you only get 14 regions, not 16. That's why. Venn diagrams are a really bad idea. But that's, a, that's an aside. OK, so here's the recurrence. The recurrence is dn plus 1 is dn plus 2 times n. Now, where does that come from? When you put in the new circle, it intersects all the old circles twice. And now you get regions, but because it's a circle, you get the number of new segments is the number of cut points. Now, you, this idea that you get one more, you don't when it goes around. So the recurrence is dn plus 1 is dn plus 2n. Uh, I've used the recurrence to calculate the values, which you could just as well have done by n. But now you can do D5 and D6 as well. You could do T10, D20. You could do it by hand. It would take you 10 or 15 minutes, but you could do it. All right, now let's begin to work some that are a little harder. Now this is a classic problem, a, a tiling problem. I take a grid, and now I'm going to tile it. I'm going to tile it with dominoes, the popular board game, you know, your di diamond, 
your d dominoes look like this, and you can turn them this way or that way. So how many ways to tile a 2 by n grid with dominoes? You can use as many as you like, put them horizontal or vertical, no restriction. How many ways to do it? So it's a 2 by n grid. So there's two rows and n columns. If there's only one column, then the thing looks like this. How many ways to tile it? Just one. Because the only way to do it is to put one vertical domino in it. If it's a two by two, how many ways to do it? Well, it's obviously two, because you can put two vertical dominoes, or you can put two horizontal dominoes. That's all you can do. And what is the recurrence? And we're going to see that the recurrence is dn plus 2 equals dn plus 1 plus dn. Now, so unlike the first two problems, the next one depends on two previous ones, not just one. All right, now where does this explanation come from? Here's the way I like to think about it. In the picture... Look at the upper right corner of the grid. The upper right corner. That corner is covered by a domino. There are two ways that it can be covered. Either it's covered vertically, and that's the case that I've illustrated. And if it is, Take that domino away, and what do you have in front of it? A tiling of a grid, which is just one smaller. So that's dn plus 2 equals dn plus 1. That explains the dn plus 1 term. But if the upper right corner is covered not by a vertical domino, but by a horizontal one, what can you tell me? Next, underneath it, there is another horizontal domino. And if that's the case, if you take those two away, then in front of it, the size of the grid has been reduced by two, and you have any tiling you like. And that's the explanation for the plus D N term. And now... I can calculate the value of dn for any value of n. It's just the sum of the preceding two terms. That's the famous Fibonacci sequence that we referenced in our opening class. And so you can find d5 and d6. What is uh, d5? 8. What's d6? d13. You can, do them, you can do as many as you like. All right, now here's one. I, I'm not going to solve this one for I just want to show you that uh, lurking around are some pretty challenging problems. So here's a 3 by n grid. And I want to tile it. But you're allowed to use tiles of four different shapes. And those shapes are, are in the colors. There's two L-shaped type things, a red one and a green one. Notice that there are two other L-shaped regions, but they're not allowed. I only allow you to use those two. Is it clear? So if you take an L, there's four, four ways to rotate that L. I'm only allowing you to use two of them. And then you can have a 1 by 3 or a 3 by 1. You can have them horizontal or vertical. All right, so I've shown you a tiling using all four, but you don't have to use all four. You could, you could tile the whole thing with uh, vertical, those purple vertical ones. So the question is, how many ways? This is not... Not a trivial problem. It'll take you some time. But 
to show you that I understand the core values at Georgia Tech, cash prize of $1 to the first person who can correctly evaluate D20. Now, of course, you also have to convince me that it's correct because I don't know the answer. I don't give away my dollars easily. You will have to do something to get it. But there will be appropriate fanfare and celebration when this moment is reached. Is it clear what the challenge problem is? And this will be posted on the web so you can find it at your convenience. Of course, I should caution you. Anyone trying to earn a few bucks by solving my problems I should get a part-time job. It, it pays better. Okay. Let's take uh, another equation, but this one is going to be a little bit more challenging. How many ternary sequences do not contain 0, 1 in consecutive positions? Not that it has a 0 here and a 1 there. What's illegal is to have a 0 followed immediately by a 1. How many ternary sequences do not contain 0, 1 in consecutive positions? All right, let's get started on this. What's T1? How many ternary sequences of length 1 do not contain 0, 1? Well, they're all good. So there's three. They're all good. How many of length 2 are good? There's nine all together, and exactly one of them is bad. So T2 is eight. Let's verify, without doing the recurrence, that T3 is 21. How many sequences of length three all together? Three times three times three. Twenty-seven. Some of them are bad. How can you be bad? You can be bad if you have zero, one, something. How many of those are there? Zero, one, something. Three. But you can also be bad if you're something, zero, one. How many of those are there? Three. Are there any that were double counted? We have two stacks of bad ones. Did we double count? Zero, one, something, that middle position was a one, and something, zero, one, that middle position was a zero. So there was no duplicate counting. So there are six bad ones, six. From 27 is 21. Okay. Now, I, I really wouldn't want to verify the 55 by hand. Probably get it wrong. And even if I could, I wouldn't be able to do T5 or T6 by hand. I'd certainly screw it up. We want to get a recurrence. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out why the recurrence is Tn is 3 times Tn minus 1 minus Tn minus 2. First question, why did I write it this way? In the other examples, I wrote Tn plus 2 equals Tn plus 1 plus Tn. I did those. Why am I doing it this way? Because some days you do it one way and some days you do it the other and and you'll be talking to a computer science or engineering prof and sometimes they do it forward and coming back sometimes you start and go backwards it's absolutely equivalent absolutely equivalent okay so where does this recurrence come from Tn is 3 times Tn minus 1 minus Tn minus 2. Let me see if I can explain it to you without writing anything down. All right. 
Look at a good sequence and look at the last character. That last character is a zero, a one, or a two. So we've split it into three parts. If the last character is a two, what is in front of it? A good sequence that's just one shorter. If you take a good sequence and add a two onto it, it's still good. So that's one of the t n minus ones. If you take a good sequence and add a zero as the last, it's still good. It's always good. Now, if you have a good sequence and you add a one to it, is it good? Not necessarily. Some of those are bad. So if you take 3 times 2 n minus 1, it's an overcount. You have included some things which you shouldn't have done. Let's see if we can adjust for that. What do we have to take back off? A good sequence, a good sequence, a good sequence, a good sequence. We add a 1 on the end and it's now bad. What was that digit right there? A 0. And then what's in front of all of this? Any good sequence of size n minus 2. Take any good sequence of size n minus 2, add a 0 and a 1 at the end, and it becomes bad. And that's your overcount, and you take it off. So that's the recurrence. Tn is 3 times Tn minus 1 minus Tn minus 2. So now I can verify that T3 is 3 times 8 minus 3, which is 21. T4 is 3 times 21 minus 8, which is 55, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's pretty neat, then. Pretty neat.